course. Got Ed Voida. Like yeah, Ed, Ed <laughs> Voida, who, I mean, he played in the Season 3 World Championships. Not the worst resume. <laughs> Getting and top eight. One thing about Voidal is that he doesn't really play Annie, so they just ban Annie every time because Annie sees such a strong support right now. Uh, so many uh, plays can be set up with those AOE stuns, as we've seen already. Fnatic, amazing plays there, Yellow Star, uh, yep. pulling off multiple AOE stuns in one fight. Get that one right off the table. Yeah, absolutely. So the bans, of course, still coming through. Kassadin aimed at Fabivan. No surprise there. The Elise jungle away from Ku. And of course, you uh, you know, the Kha'Zix banned away as well. I mean, and that's actually, interestingly enough, that's actually a top lane Kha'Zix uh, dropped away from Cabo Shard. He played that in their round of uh, 24 match. Yeah, so the other ban that I would be expecting um, is the Ribbon ban here. Not only is she just a dominating champion right now, mm -hmm. um, but it's also one of Fabivan's favorite champions uh, in that mid lane. Exactly. We'll see if they uh, drop more bands at him right there. It was interesting. You listened to the uh, the interview that Zoxus gave, and he was talking about how uh, they just got to target ban one player specifically because he had a short enough champion pool they could deal with it. But it's not going to be the Riven ban at all. It will be Lee Sin, another jungle ban coming through. So there you go. Instalock Riven. Yeah, don't ban it. They're obviously going to pick that one up really quick. And that's another strength of like this Cloud9 team. He talked about um, the short champion pool being an easy target. You know, you can just go for one player if they only have three champions. Mm -hmm. All these players have very deep champion pools, so you can't target someone like that. Then really, you just try and ban out the very strong ones that your your team doesn't like to play, mm -hmm. and uh, sort of even the play, playing field like from there. Yeah, and we've really come through with none of those bans aimed at Voidal whatsoever. He's got yeah. his champion pool intact as well, and so now we got to go through the picks and bans as, as we kind of continue on. So the Instalock Riven there again for Cloud9, the mid lane there for Fabivan. Mm -hmm. uh, heavy bottom lane, they've got their pick of the litter for the top lane aside from the Kha'Zix ban, but they say, yes, Jungle Vibe, top lane Shyvana, we're going to start things off. Kind of, we just saw these champions, right, in the LCS. And I love me some Bai, probably one of my favorite <laughs> junglers. Um, that comboed with a Shivana means that you have a great dive team already. Uh, Vi is automatically going to get to the target that you want, and that's a really good assist for Shivana because she doesn't have the hard CC for herself, but once she can get to that target, then she can stick on her very well if she's built that Blade of the Ruined King. Yeah, well, speaking of getting stuck on and trying to go away, Lucian and Thresh coming through here. So Voidal and uh, Hyarnan play it right. I feel like he'll be fairly safe against these guys. Yeah, adding a Thresh Lantern onto an already mobile AD carry makes for a uh, very hard target to catch here. Uh, pretty much this whole C9 team so far is also very mobile. Like Riven herself comes out with amazing plays, um, highlight reels all day because of the mobility that she has. You know, multiple dashes. Anytime you have a champion like that, you're going to get uh, some really good plays. That being said, Yasuo has not been banned again. He has unlimited dashes. That's so. true. As long as his minions are around. As long as minions around, you got more dashes. targets than he can dash. It's true, and then the cooldowns, and you're just you can go forever. That's the way to go for it. But looks like heavy bot lane gonna pick their bot lane right here. They're looking right now at Zyra Caitlyn. Haven't seen those guys very often in the recent past. But with all the supports left open, it is gonna be a Zyra pickup. I guess we do see Zyra mid sometimes, so that is yeah. a little bit ambiguous. But Caitlyn is the lock in here. Loves that one. Yeah, but um, I I probably go with you. I'd say this is probably a Zyra. Uh, here. That's a really cool duo lane because they have such long range. I was one of the longest range supports. Kaelin is the longest range AD carry, so they have got great auto attack harass and they have the possibility of you know setting up ganks for a buy because the snare, if a buy comes in after that, then it's going to be a pretty much oh well. We talked about how great support Zyra is. Maybe we'll be uh, mistaken. You never know. Could always be a troll pick. You I'm still hoping for that great. Yasuo pick. Yeah. Send that Yasuo mid instead. I feel like he wouldn't have a good time against Ribbon though. I'd yeah. Like, I'm going to win wall your ultimate. You're nothing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> At it's six, it's useful. Okay. Right. So, <laughs> Agragas nowadays is really popular in the jungle, um, but it could also be played mid lane, of course. That's where mm -hmm. he comes from. The, the jungle Gragas, though, is one of my favorites. Uh, he clears out every single camp so quickly uh, because of the change to the body slam where it deals equal damage to everything. It's true. There's definitely a possibility here, but of course, the lineups. Probably yeah. mid. It's, it, I mean, unless we're going mid Vi, we're going Shushe from the Spring Promotion Tournament last year, then maybe it's going to be there. But, of course, the lineup already in here for Cloud9. Jungle, Jarvan, top lane, Mundo. The most likely mm -hmm. they could swap around a little bit there. It looks like it is going to be uh, the timeout here, and Gragas is the pickup. So, Jungle, Zyra, after all, most likely mid lane Gragas. Lineups are here. Yeah, so this Cloud9 team is very AD heavy. You know, they've only got really the slow burning magic damage on that team. So, it looks like... 
this heavy bot lane team could stack some early armor, um, especially on Shivana. It would be a yeah. very effective uh, strategy for them. So they'll probably go for that because this is definitely a team fight oriented team. If they're going to be fighting over these early dragons, which both of these teams should, um, then that early armor for the heavy bot lane could, could be a really big factor in their victory. Okay, so outside of dragon fights and sort of late game scaling, we're looking at these. Uh, you know, I kind of like the dual lane matchups here. I feel like Kate Zyra is just so long range that even though you got like the who's who, right? Like Lucian and Thrash are two <laughs> yeah. like such high priority picks, but I feel like Heavy Bot Lane can survive that lane without much problem. I, I do really like that lane. Plus, not only do they have Caitlyn traps, but they have the seeds from Zyra too. So they have actually a good amount of protection, which is something that bot lanes are lacking a little bit now mm -hmm. in this preseason patch with nobody starting wards anymore since all supports are pretty much starting Dorans or maybe a gold item if you're uh, adventurous. Yeah. There's, there's just so much less vision in the bottom lane. I know a lot of junglers have started ganking there much more than they did in the past seasons. Yeah, it's interesting. We see like there's like the very rare, like maybe 10% of supports actually start up with wards and, and that's just not as common anymore. So guys, as the teams load into the game, it gives us a chance to break down these two squads a little bit more, starting with Cloud9 EU. Right, so Cloud9 EU. We already talked about the hype. Um, they're one of the top seeds in this Challenger tournament and they were the number one seed coming from EU West. Yesterday, they also beat Aatrox Gaming in just over 26 minutes and their AD carry, Huron, Huron? Yeah, he went. Uh, <laughs> he never died. He went 8 0 and 6 as Lucian. And you may also recognize their support, as we talked about. Voidal, he was a member of Gambit Gaming during the summer split of Season 3. And of course, their opponents today, Heavy Bot Lane, they're coming in there with their own win, thanks to some big plays. And where else? Their bot lane. Yeah. Okay, so the Heavy Bot Lane took out uh, Curry Tiki in just under 32 minutes. So a little bit longer for them, but their AD carry also performed extremely well. Uh, Nadaris had a great game. He went 6 1 and 13 as Caitlyn mm -hmm. on Caitlyn again. Yeah, these guys haven't really changed up their strats too much, I think. Uh, a lot of it being being a little bit harder to research their opponents, being you know, sort of online yeah. opponents and, and whatnot. Um, they're just kind of going back to the comfort picks, right? Riven, the most played champion there for the mid laner, the Lucian, the, you know, everything kind of just coming through and playing, yeah, these are comfortable champions. This is what we know we'll do well with, play some default strats, and it's working for these guys, to That Riven one getting through did kind of surprise me, because that's one thing that you actually can research yeah. about this team. <laughs> Everybody's like, oh, well, well, what do you know about the Cloud9? Uh, yeah, they, they like that Riven mid. Yeah. Like, I just look them up online, and like, your most played champion is Riven. Okay, well, that's probably likely here. All right. Um, and what I actually think is interesting about these players and, and the research that we've done is uh, a lot of these guys have their most played champions are not um, common meta champions. So, for example, mm -hmm. um, Oroamne, his most played is Jace. And we don't see him much at all. Like, Jace, not really anymore. But throughout the last season, he's been playing a lot of that guy. And, and you've got, like, these pocket picks that aren't Especially common. Especially in the top lane. Yeah, yeah exactly. And, and I always think that's interesting to have in your <laughs> champion pool. It's very unique. Um, you know, ever since, you know, the tier changes and stuff like that, we haven't seen a lot of Jace. I do like the champion, though, because he's so versatile. It can bring back a lot of these poke compositions that have kind of fallen, uh, you know, by the wayside. And he also has great disengage um, with his gate. So it does open up a few more strategies than this, oh, Shivana Mundo. Oh, what's going to be in top lane? Shivana Mundo. Maybe Renekton? Maybe Warwick or Trundle. <laughs> That's what really excited me so far yeah. about the EU uh, LCS. But yeah, this game... Yeah. Mundo. Well, guys, going to get ourselves into the game in just a few more seconds. And actually, you spoke to that Trundle. It's another champion I have seen Noramne uh, play a few times in his opening. So, guys, here we go. Game is here. Let's get ourselves into the match. It's going to be a fun one. We can see Heavy Bot Lane spawning on the right-hand side just three seconds into the game. Freeze gonna have picture. Awesome. Freeze All right. Frame it. That was just a, a beautiful team portrait right there. Yeah. Everybody wanted their faces on the steps. Beginning of the Coke Challenger League here. Uh, everybody wants to remember these these key moments. I remember yeah. my first tournament, Freak. You actually played at a, a couple tournaments, too. I way played, back. I played way uh, back in beta. I played before yeah. anyone like barely knew the game existed. But I got to at least say that I lost to Reginald. It counts. It counts. I went 1-2. <laughs> back when Corky's key revealed invisibility. I'm basically just like the grandpa of League of Legends competitive. How, how do you feel about the new Corky Q there? Not only does it not... In Reveal invisible, but he mm -hmm. just kind of lobs it over there. Very soft toss. Yeah, not, sorry. Not so <laughs> I actually, I actually like the Q change a little bit. Um, so it basically lets you fight from a little farther away. Like before, uh -huh. you pretty much had your auto attack range. That was how everything worked until level six. Um, and now you get to actually poke or wave clear, do a little bit more 
kind of like defensively, if you're losing lane, at least you can toss stuff out there. Uh, so Corky actually still works really well for me. I still like the champion a whole lot. He's plus he's, he's one of my OG Trinity favorites. Trinity Force building champion. I mean, so. the thing is, what was great about that is way back when Last Whisper was so OP that not going Eye Edge Last Whisper was the wrong choice on every AD carry. So actually, there's like a post from me in like 2010, like March, where I'm like, Corky item tier list. Trinity Force is trashed here. It was like, uh, never buy this item on Corky. Uh, it's true. You can find this post on, on LeagueOfLegends.com. I put Trinity Force and Trash Tier on Corky. But that was four years ago. Times have changed. Times have changed. And now we're going to see Kaylin versus Lucian. Yes. This bottom lane, like you said, uh, poke advantage definitely on the Kaylin and mm -hmm. the Zyra. But the possibility for Lantern Ganks. I, I always have to give the advantage to the lane that has uh, the better jungle ganks. So the possibility of throwing that Lantern back, not only will you be able to bring in a great jungler um, for a jungle gank, but you can yeah. also use that as a bluff, even if your jungler's not <laughs> yeah. there. And if uh, the Zyra Kaelin get a snare or something, they start going super aggressive, you can actually throw it backwards and bluff them out of uh, further aggression. It's true. I've, I've seen that. It's like completely no one's around, but you don't know, and you just, well, maybe I won't go for it. Um, there's actually one thing I wanted to talk about a little before with the Zyra, because... Um, just so you guys know, by the way, what's going on online, we're playing on a three-minute delay uh, by the fact that we're playing online. Um, and so we're getting through that timer right now. We've got about a minute till the game starts, which is why you're seeing us instead of the beautiful team portraits. With Sorry, about, sorry about that. So yeah, <laughs> a minute to go, we're going to be fine. But I wanted to press you on Zyra a little bit yeah. because um, we're seeing so much more bruiser emphasis, right? Mundo, mm -hmm. Shivana, things like that. And, and Zyra to me was always this sort of disengaged type support, heavy area of effect, a lot of lockdown for like guys who walk in straight lines, and I felt like Zyra makes so much sense when you're seeing Shivana and Mundo run around the entire time. I really like her. Um, you know, she's not super effective against those tanks that will just sit through the knockup and then they'll still be there super tanky. I love her against the Kha'Zix, Yasuo, Riven that are super popular now also and are going to be diving in because she can lock them up. And if they get snared, then they're toast. Okay. So I, I actually I do like that point a lot. I think that she is underrated in this meta, um, but really because of the popularity of these AD assassins that are all melee, okay. and they're going to be charging in on her, so she can make them pay with their lives for it. So if a Biven, unfortunately, is playing Riven right here, so there you go. And actually, he's already afraid of his lane. Doran shield start, uh, a bit more uncommon for Riven there, but not sort of the offensive start we tend to see for these champions. All right, so... It looks, you know, the other thing about the Doran starts for supports, since we have both of these supports starting Dorans, um, that early invades have really dropped off because you aren't going to be dropping wards very deep in enemy territory. There's not a lot of extra information that you're going to be getting after this. All right, so here we go, guys. Everyone just kind of milling about on their own sides of the map. And actually, a recall from Voidal. I want to see if he actually turns that into a bit of a lane swap because right now, Hyarnan is still staying on the bottom side. These guys drawing their battle lines. And actually, in general, we've been seeing a lot of standard sort of lane setups. The 1v1's top lane, the 2v2's down in the bottom. We've just kind of seen less of it so far in 2014 as we just wait for everyone to just make sure no one is doing anything tricky. Minute 30 comes across. Yep, there's the warding totems coming across and looks like everybody's just happy to play a fairly defensive early game. But as I say, that Cloud Nine's looking a little tricky right now, right in this river brush. All right, a couple of the defensive, you know, trinkets dropped. Everybody starting out with the warding trinkets. That's kind of been the the consensus nowadays. You know, maybe one person starts with the sweeping lens, but this time around, we're gonna see all trinkets and an invade very early here. They time this with the 155 of the red, and they're gonna be able to steal this one away. And of course, at the same time, notice that Ku is taking his own red buff at the bottom side of the map. So Cloud9 getting two very early red buffs, giving the red over to Hyarnan, actually, as this goes on. And remember that Odo Omne has teleport on Mundo. He can show back up to the bottom lane in time. And I take it back. It is a 2v1 now for Cloud9. So 2v1 up top, red buff Lucian. Very, very dangerous for harassing under turret. Um, it does have a dot on it, so he's not going to be sustained damage under the turret, or else he's going to grab... Uh, tower aggro, but that's not what he's looking for. He's looking for the old Lucian combo. One ability and the double shot. That's all you need under the turret unless Thresh is able to land the hook and then you can go for the kill. And meanwhile though, just the jungle pattern, I still gotta say Cloud9 started the game off with the three buff start is a great way. Their first sort of, not first televised game, but, but first game on sort of their road to the LCS right now. These guys off to a wonderful start here with just a minor lead. 
and that is going to put Vi behind a little bit, but with the new jungle, it doesn't actually hurt her as much as it used to. The She has very quick respawn times on all the smaller camps, so she can hard farm those camps and get at least back up to equal experience and gold fairly quickly. The only thing she's going to be missing is the potent ganks that come from having a red buff on you. Speaking of having a red buff on him, Ku already here to knock back Kabashard. Airwalk's there as well. Fib. Even though in a fight already with his star, look at them down to half health on Gragas. Already the aggression here from Cloud9, not to mention the 3v2 top lane. So the 3v2 is going to cut off the rest of heavy bot lane from this turret, so they don't even get a chance to try and defend under the turret. Um, meanwhile, Ku here trying to not even let them get Golem experience. This means that the turret definitely going to go down first for Cloud9 here, even though Caitlyn Zyra, I would have given the edge for early turret damage in two versus one situations if it wasn't for the red buff steal and the intervention of Ku. Yeah, Otoamon is sitting there kind of defending his turret, half HP on that structure, but a level three Dr. Mundo didn't even burn his teleport on the way down. So a lot of resources here for Cloud9 already. Four minutes in, they've got control of the top lane, and they're at least surviving bottom lane. So it, it's definitely really great for these guys. And, and you've already seen Fabivan playing aggressively, knocking back his opponent in the mid lane as well. Yeah, pretty much everyone on, on Cloud9 was looking to play aggressive because they were the ones who pulled the two versus one switch and still started a Dorans on Thresh. A lot of the times, if a team knows that they're going to be the ones going for the 2 vs 1 switch and they think they're going to get it, then they'll have their support start with that gold per 5 items so they can just accrue more gold. Yeah. And probably not going to have to use those combat Red stats from the Dorans. But even knowing that, Voidal has started with that Doran shield just for that extra level of safety. And Kavashar just kind of sitting in the brush, hoping to gain experience as the lane finally pushes in. But one turret to zero. Romney, his turret down dangerously low right now. I don't know if C9 will get a lane swap in time to keep that outer turret alive, or if it just becomes a sort of belated trade. It looks like they're just trying to stay where they're strong. They've got so much of a lead up in this top lane that they're going to just continually press on this weak point of heavy bot lane and keep their duo up top for as long as they can. Now the thing is, since they have you know started those Doran's item, everybody's starting a Doran's item, no early wards for them, it's going to be hard for them to stay that deep and also be safe enough um, because they can't cover their, their backsides with those wards. Yeah, so it's going to be, you know, how well can Airwalks and Kabashard kind of capitalize on an overextended top lane right now as Voidal in here and then sit a little bit back. Another thing with the uh, with the invade there would have to be control of the mid lane. If Fivivin is not able to pressure this Gragas in, then Gragas would be able to roam up top and stop that duo push too. Mm -hmm. That's why the aggression in all the lanes at the same time is key for C9 right here. Even though, you know, bottom lane, he's obviously he's not going to be able to get kills or anything. He's doing a great job just staying alive. But here comes a jump in the Vault Breaker. Nice flash there by Omne, keeping himself alive. But now it's a 3v1. It seems like the bottom lane is heavy enough to pull the rest of his team down there, and that turret is going to crumble. All right, so they are going to answer uh, the turret gold at least, but the advantage still in C9's favor. They have the extra gold. They were able to zone off Shivana a little bit longer there than Mundo was starved. So he's going to be uh, a little bit safer when they do meet back up. Yeah, Adoamne's got about a 10 minion kill and one level his would-be lane opponent there. So you, I got to say, I agree with you on this one. And in fact, Cloud9 making the rotation here. They've got all five members to the bottom side, and this dragon's being started. I really like how Vivian also starts off the dragon, tanks the entire first couple of hits with his shield. As soon as his shield is, is uh, knocked down, they switch over, uh, get the jet dragon rotating so it does a little bit less damage. Yeah, so even with the turret getting traded, though, it's Cloud9 looking back for normal lanes. And of course, well, turret's getting traded, but dragon's always nice. Airwalks still wants to do things. This bottom lane actually pulling a lot of attention right now. And let's see if Airwalks can turn this around in a 2v2 or 3v2. Uh, Voidal really wanted to go ward over there, but he didn't go ahead and do it. So the cooldown on Vault Breaker right back up, and he's coming in. And the slow's going to be there on here, and then as well as Voidal. Voidal on the half HP. Nice play lands onto all three, but the chase is still going on. Ignite onto Voidal, and no, Cloud9 gets away. Nice play by Voidal. It was an interesting choice by Airwalks there. He had time to charge up his Vault Breaker to a fully charge, which is double the damage mm -hmm. it would have done. And he just decided to actually go for the small bump there, um, walking up. So I don't know. He could have gotten a little bit more damage, but it wouldn't have been a kill in, in either case. So just a personal choice right there. And speaking of personal choices, actually, I'm 
a little bit surprised by Voidal's choice. Uh, he went for the the Relic Shield here. Now, Thresh is not technically melee. He doesn't get the Execute proc there. And also, we've seen so many supports go Talisman of Ascension. I'm not used to seeing this item choice. It's it, pretty interesting because Talisman would be so great with this team, too. You already have the Mundo and Riven that are going to be trying to get um, very deep into the enemy team. And an extra little speed boost would do wonders for them. However, Voidal uh, is definitely a huge fan of the fully upgraded Talisman going for that face of the mountain so he can use that shield to further protect um, not only the AD carry, but he could also use that on one of these melee divers. So nice. having that extra shield for Riven could actually be the turning point in the team fight. And then we'll see as that pans out. Ku right there, level six already. Has ultimate, of course, airwalks on Vi in a similar spot. So as you called it, the extra jungle sort of respawns, helping Vi keep up on airwalks is doing pretty all right here. It's only the top laner, really, of Cabochard, who's still without an ultimate right here. Pretty rough spot for him, despite the fact that his bottom lane's already six. Yeah, bottom lanes. Everybody's six down there, except Voidal. He's coming up on it pretty quick. The combo from uh, a Thresh landing a hook onto someone squishy like that Zyra would definitely be death at this point. Yeah, not to mention if you get a Jarvan gank. And speaking of which, you do have Ku running around on this side of the map, down towards the bottom lane. This could be a lantern gank if, we, if he really goes for this. Yeah, it's interesting because there's a ward in the tri bush, and there's no ward in the side lane bush, but there is a trap there. So Ku could uh, find himself right standing on top of a cupcake and, and ruin hopes of that lantern gank. Oh, but that'd be rough. He probably won't even, won't even come to the situation there. Uh, he's looking for the lane gank though, but Airwalks, of course, already hear the jump across. But watch this: there's already a ward in the river brush to spot it if he goes for that jump. Coop. Could even be a Jarvan in that river brush <laughs> soon. <laughs> that would suck a little bit. Uh, thankfully, Vi still has flash, but no, actually, both junglers kind of fizzle their attempts to gank right there, and nothing happens at all. Instead, Ku rejoins his team in the mid lane, looks near the top side as well, and they're just. They're looking at things to poke at. They're just not quite finding enemy champions yet. Looking for a little yeah. bit of a late invade, but Airwalks finally does pull the trigger. Yeah, Knockup's not gonna land on a Hyarnan. Hyarnan goes back into the 1v2 right there. Good damage on an RDS as well. Voidos forced to run away. Only 400 health left on him. Hyarnan shows back up. Good damage on a Caitlyn. First blood though is gonna go to Airwalks. And now can Lucian answer this one back? The flash is gonna come through, but it's gonna be answered there by Hyarnan now in the fight against Airwalks. Airwalks running back and uh, he was gonna pour some away. So it looks like just the one for one trade. First blood though, going to heavy bot lane. Hiernan did a, a really good job, even though they were outnumbered three versus two. He was laying down cover fire for Voidal. Wow, the entire heavy bot lane team was chasing after Voidal, and he was probably going to kill Voidal no matter what. He was able to put down enough damage with that culling on two members that he was able to follow up with an answer kill, with pretty much the best situation you can make out of that gank. Yeah, 2v3 going one for one, definitely not a bad way to play something out, but it does mean Heavy bot lane gets just the smallest bit of gold back into this game. Still a 1,000 gold lead for Cloud9 due to the dragon kill they took off their superior rotations. And now a minute 40 to go and standard lanes. I want to see if dragon becomes an important objective for these teams again. Also, we've hit the point where you really got to worry about roaming from both of the mid laners. Uh, the Riven, even though she does not have boots. She's got the cooldown reduction from a Brutalizer, <laughs> which is almost as good as boots on Riven because Arguably she has better. so many dashes. Uh, and she's actually been making frequent trips up and down this river. Meanwhile, Gragas is the quintessential roaming mid laner looking for uh, those ganks onto squishy targets. So the mid lane wards are going to become even more important. And I'm happy to see um, at least um, the, the red side here pulling up some some red wards. Yeah, actually, you mentioned sort of the mid lane wards coming through. It, uh, Hyunnan, or not Hyunnan, sorry, uh, Fabivan a little while back actually put a pink ward in the enemy like lizard jungle brush. You can yeah. see the little blue circle on your screen right above where the camera is right now. And that actually, at least for Deficio's help, hasn't been walked through. That one actually <laughs> did last for a little while. Uh, I think more than three minutes at this point. So that one's given a good amount of vision. Yeah. For the record, I think most junglers have uh, adapted to walking through every single bush that's along their path just to make sure there aren't pink wards in there. Mm -hmm. Because pink wards provide so much value now. If you buy them in the early game, they can last you know, up, upwards of even seven, eight minutes. And yep. that's just so much vision for the gold value that you're getting there. Um, checking all of the bushes that you walk by is definitely uh, a, an adaptation that pretty much everybody's had to make. Voidal just flashed. 
Like Airwalks charged a vault or charged a vault breaker, and Void was like, "No, I'm out later." So just charging the Q, forcing the flash of the way. Didn't need a Thresh Lantern. Everything wonderful right there, but uh, certainly Cloud9 playing a little bit defensively in this bottom lane. Dragon is up right now, and of course Teleport is here for Mundo. So Mundo has Teleport while Shivana doesn't, but... Oh no, Shivana actually... Is that a cooldown right there? It is, on her ultimate. So she can't she can't get the interrupt. Mundo's backing off. They don't want to contest this one. It would be uh, turned against them. All right, so nothing at all. Cloud9 with a very easy take for themselves. Some more gold coming through. And now almost, uh, I guess, a 2.2 thousand gold lead here for these guys. The engage going to come in there on the Q. Forced to flash away half HP. Void will pop in the box as yeah. well, but knocked up there by Zyra. This is dangerous. The re-engage comes in. Look at that burst damage. Goodbye, says Riven, picking up Zyra. Airwalks forced away at 50 health as well. I can't believe they only got one kill for that one. That was a beautiful combo, though. Really, really nice attempt there. They baited him back in just for the Jarvan knockup. Times perfectly uh, with the Vivian coming in for that burst damage that everyone knows coming from Riven. Uh, we already did see the Mundo use his teleport there, even though it would have been a late teleport and not change the fight that much. Shivana went for that interrupt. She yep. was fully charged. Uh, as you can see, when the red bar is full, she'll be able to use that dragon dis Dragon's Descent to knock him out of teleport. And now Cloud9 making the best of a decent situation. Hyarnan staying in this bottom lane to get a little bit more damage on that bottom turret and actually dropping a decent way now, below half HP there in that 2v2. And that's some good headway for these guys. It looks like the, the Zyra Kaelin here definitely going to be playing off the back foot now that there are two kills for Lucian and he's added a BF sword. So he's not rushing that Trinity Force build, which would mean uh, the culling would be even even weaker. Now he's got the extra AD there for the scaling for it. Yeah. And all the fans of Culling will be very happy when it actually deals a significant amount of damage. Significant. He even stopped for the Phage right there. Just like, we wanted the move speed of like kind of Trinity Forest and was like, it's good enough. We're going to gonna go for the DPS for the race to this one. Uh, in fact, Kudo looking for a flank kill right there. This could be a 2v1 onto, uh, onto Cavashard. And he did just use his Dragon Scent, so he has to get a few more attacks off before he can use that again. If he turns and hits Jarvan a couple times, then he'd be able to charge it up. Yeah, no but Cataclysm available, He can though. just walk away. Yeah, walked away as a scary Dragon Lady. Nothing too bad happening right there. Keeps the turret alive, at least. As Hyarnan sweeps away this minion wave, this bottom lane. Kind of staying normal right here, two on two. These guys have honestly been slowing down a little bit, but I say that Airwalks looks for the jump onto oh. Fiviv and can they get the damage here? Trying to dash away, Cataclysm comes across, do they have the damage? No, Fiviv can't get in. Q goes back for the knockup. These guys forced to run away, but Airwalks might not be done. Has the assault and battery, lands that coup. Not in a good place. Goodbye, Astara picked up that kill. Two for two on the kill score right now, and Fiviv still looking for blood himself. Does get a little bit of damage on the Airwalks. One attack to go, but can't find it. Now the stun onto Astari, still forcing Gragas away as well. Void will make the rotation. Just a one for zero. Even with two missed Vault Breakers, they're able to get the kill off of that one. Very well played by Heavy Bot Lane. But you could still see Riven was chasing both members off even after Jarvan dropped. Mm -hmm. Definitely still had kill potential. One more hit would have been the death of Airwalks. A very scary champion right there. And kind of speaking of how strong Riven's been, we've actually seen uh, Gragas vs. Riven earlier today. And we see kind of the same build. Triple Doran's Ring, the extra health for Gragas to keep him alive in that matchup. The extra health for Gragas is going to help a lot, but also Gragas has picked up a Morella Namicon for the Mundo in the top lane. So he's thinking ahead already. He's going to be able to reduce that health regen, and Mundo won't get to as big of a deal as we've seen in so many of the the patch of the games on this last patch. Yeah, yeah. I actually was a fan of uh, Kevin's teleport. He's like sitting there, like just fully tanking the two, like the Renekton, and I want to say Vi. And just nothing happens. Oh, they force the jump away. The flash chased by the dragon. And Ignite's going to be enough to pick up the kill. Kabashard takes that one. Three to two now for Heavy Bot Lane. Bringing the kill score in their lead for the first time. Yeah. It looks like that Mundo definitely won't be getting to the scary point anytime soon. Easily taken out there, but now Fabivin again. And oh, goodbye to Caitlyn. C9EU picking that one up. Fabivin with the kill credit. Of course, Ku helping out quite a bit as well. And these guys are kind of content to stay in the mid lane right here. The bot lane might need to protect this one. Such a scary combo when you can land the, the Jarvan armor penetration plus comboed with a Riven who's built the Brutalizer. They just rip right through any target.
That's actually a really good point it, that you bring up the, the Jarvan Q because you're like, yeah, it's a really physical heavy team and if they build armor, <laughs> and it's like, oh my god, the Jarvan Q. So I like this a lot by uh, Cloud9 EU right there, bringing the kill score uh, back to equal, bringing the turrets now 2 to 1 as well, and it's a minute 20 to drag, and then those have been 2 for 0 as well. Minute 20, yeah, so they've got a pretty good amount of time to set up for this next one. And, you know, both teams have decent ward coverage over the area, so really it's going to be about are we sending Shivana top again to try and deal with the Mundo teleport, or do we just bring one down? Because I don't think heavy bot lane are going to be the ones initiating the next dragon. I think they're just going to trying to be defending against it. Well, we'll see how good their defense ends up being. So far, they haven't really found their way in just yet, but they do have some offenses. Mid lane actually under fire. Mid lane definitely going to go down here because the oh, rotation's a little bit slow there for the C9 EU. They're actually turning their sights towards top. But another point I want to make on the Dragon is that actually, you know, it was about eight minutes ago or something, both uh, supports here picked up the sweeping lenses. So those are actually ready to use. They've actually used them a couple times already. They picked them up pretty early. And uh, as soon as you hit level nine, I really like at least one person on your team going to switch them out. Usually prefer two. Um, getting one on the, uh, you know, roaming assassins like Gragas mm -hmm. or uh, Riven would be really helpful. They, they have uh, picked up a couple, though, and they've got options for the next dragon fight if they want to force it. Yeah, absolutely. The ward sweeping definitely available. One order used by a Q actually sweeping away the upper jungle of heavy bot lane, the Wraith Brush over there. But Voidals is up right now, if I see it correctly, which means that these guys can get control of this area of the map. These teams are grouping around. Then you asked what Shivana would do, but Shivana's actually come down, so heavy bot lane already available here with all five members to contest this dragon. Ty, talk about gold value of pink wards right there. That one only, la that didn't even last one minute. That was uh, Voidal's uh, pink ward right there. It, it did its part though. Oh my goodness, the initiate from Airwax. And Kuz is gonna go to Airwax himself though. The fight has begun. Fivivin dropped dangerously low and goodbye. Astara picks that one up. Airwax getting away off to the side as well, but there comes the AD carry. Lucian picks up one. The chase down onto Shivana. That's gonna be Cabochard going down as well. Finally to Dr. Mundo. Two for one so far. And now, uh-oh, goodbye to Heva. Three kills now for C9EU. Wonderful fight right here. Three to one. Now Jarvan doesn't want to face check that, but Voidal going in. And goodbye. Triple kill now for Hyarnan and C9EU. Uh, misses the EQ. It's a little bit okay. long right there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I feel like there's no steel coming in, though, so it's going to be all right. Uh, Voidal maybe could have soloed it, but there we go. Third dragon in a row now for Cloud9 Europe. And these guys are looking pretty good now in the mid game. Yeah, they're definitely feeling good about this game. They've got a substantial gold lead now and that was really why I was not thinking that heavy bot lane were going to start up the next dragon and was a little bit surprised that uh, he Airwax went in for the initiate uh, but really well played team fight by C9 EU um, once the Vi did initiate. Yeah I've got to give a lot of props to Hyarnan as well in this fight in this game at all sort of in general he's the number seven player in challenger solo queue right now on EU West and you're kind of seeing how he's earned that spot we talked about him in the pregame. He had some kind of ludicrous like 8-0-6 score on Lucian. Here he is 5-0-1. Yeah. Still hasn't died. Taking away other people in like the top of ranked fives. Like clearly a good player. Plus he got a culling kill in that one. So definitely bonus points right there. That Bloodthirster, man. We talked about it. He got the item. Trinity Force second. It's good enough. And it's going to be uh, an Omni Force to run away, but Heavy Bot Lane sitting four people top, and they're going to go in out of Dr. Mundo. He engages there, the Armor Shred already there from Vi as well, tanking up the turret, and do they have enough damage? Looks like, yes, Nardi is going to pick up that kill. Caitlyn's going to like that to catch up in this game. A little bit of a rotation here from Cloud9 EU, but Vivian going aggressive again in mid. Can he find a Starry? Those should have the Wind Slash still available, but 400 health on Gragas might be enough. Oh, the Flash Stun's going to be enough. There's the Execute, Vivian taking a solo kill. Another beautiful kill. They they did also rotate up to the top, like I said, but with only two members, not able to stop the turret destruction. They left Lucian down in the bottom lane because he's getting a secondary turret, whereas they only lost an outer for this. Wow, incredible stuff. And the flash engaged there onto Hitari, can, or Hitiba, sorry, and let's see if they can do enough right there. Yes, one more attack. Who picks up that kill? Unassisted, actually, just putting the damage in there. Oh, Hiva left all by himself right there. The flash EQ from Jar. 
Marvin. Oh, wow, another secondary turret down. Cloud9 are running over this game. Yeah, Cloud9 suddenly just spiked in the mid game and said, we're all going to beat you individually in all of our given 1v1 matchups. And they've been using that to push the map down. But now Fabivan forced to run Kabashard being pretty scary, vying the chase as well. This is not a Shivana who went for a Blade of the Ruin King, though. So the scary kill potential not quite there. Just a slow burn from the Sunfire. Uh, I guess they were counting on that Gragas with the Moonrell and Namakon to really be their counter to that late game Mundo uh, and didn't feel like they needed the percentage health damage of a Blade of the Ruined King Shivana. Yeah, well, it's just kind of a scary tanky Dragon Lady instead right there going for the uh, Renduous Omen next up right there. Here and then they're getting hit up a little bit by Heva. Forced to run away. Of course, you saw that Baron attempt getting stopped rather quickly by the Gragas. Looks like there was just enough vision coverage for heavy bot lane here, but you're certainly seeing screws and try to control more of the map. Yeah, it is every jungler's nightmare to have a Gragas on the opponent team because, uh, you know, as soon as they see that guy coming over, just scream for your team to stop doing Baron. You don't want to make him you him make you look silly by <laughs> making you miss a smite there. Yeah. Uh, from, pretty, from pretty much any angle, he can get the full combo um, off. It's true. I know we were talking about it back in Riot. It's like, you should bring a Yasuo to counter red side Gragas. Uh -huh. So you can yeah, win, wall win wall yeah. and feel really good about it. Uh, one day we'll see that. We'll see the smite steals getting blocked and it'll be like, the counter steal! We'll see one day. Ward slightly missing in the brush right there though. Unfortunately, Voidal slightly missing that one, but Cloud9 EU gonna try again, but right in the face of a ward, they look for this Baron attempt. I don't know if it's gonna succeed though. Well, they do have Mundo taking it, so um, he'll be able to regen a lot quicker than a lot of other members will. Also, setting this bush gank is a pretty decent idea, uh, but they only have two members up there, so a Voidal flashes out onto a trap and into Baron damage. Gonna get taken pretty low. That is the second early flash I've seen from Voida, but the engage comes in from Airwalk, shutting him down to half HP right there. Will the Gragas will they shut him they down? Got it. Yes, it will. One for zero. The knockup lands on a two from Zyra, and the fight has begun. Romney ignited, trying to run away. Got not getting a whole bunch of regen, but looks like he will escape from this fight. But these Baron attempts are not working out for C9EU. Yeah, so it was actually that bush, a little sneaky two-man bush gank up there that they set up with Lucian and Thresh that didn't work out. Getting both members caught meant they had to blow Voidal's flash going over the edge, and him being that low, they were on full retreat. Great move by Vi going for the ult immediately onto the five kill AD carry. And Gragas following that up with the ulti combo. Perfect for them. They got exactly what they needed out of that, but it only bought them some more time. They're still very far behind in this team, uh, or in this game, and they have to keep their heads about them and try and just get a little bit of vision back in their own jungle. Well, they're doing at least a good job of getting the opponents out of there and out of their lawns. So they can at least sweep a little bit, but still only one lens so far for heavy bot lane. They actually don't remove wards that rapidly. And you talk about that vision control being important. That might be something to keep track of. Cloud9. They're just walking back to Baron over and over again, this time just with wards. At least now they know they're not going to see when they inevitably try it again. So that one was Jarvan's pink. You get five pinks per team, one on each person. Um, but a lot of other members out of extra slots, too. So a little bit harder for them to control that vision. And they've actually upped it to three sweepers here for the C9 EU team. Yeah, they're following typical form, actually. What we've seen from the Koreans is the top lane on AD carry never sweep, never switch their trinket. Mm -hmm. The other three tend to by the end game. So Cloud9 at least doing some of their homework and seeing how the other pro teams are doing it. Following that trade, nice smite right there, Ku, picking up the red buff steal. So Cloud9 EU still trying to stay in control of this jungle of what would normally be heavy bot lane's jungle. And it looks like they're going to do the shove two lanes here with a 2-3 split push, um, trying to get top and mid shoved up far enough so that they can buy time to go take that Dragon. This late in the game, Dragon is worth a substantial amount of gold, but Airwalk's making them pay for it. And they're not keeping Ku locked up enough. There's the Gragas ult. He's going to go back in and say, yeah, I'm probably going to die, but jumps over the wall. Lantern comes off, but it's on the wrong side here. Ku finally does go down, but Oromne shows up. A four versus five, though. Mundo might be in the wrong spot right there. Does he have the flash to get away? No, he does not. And it's just all the damage coming across. Double kill here for Caitlyn. Three, three, and three on her. And now it's a three versus five. Cloud9 EU forced to run. I feel like that was a good idea by Cloud9 to shove up the two lanes and then retreat back to Dragon, but their rotation was so slow and it was uncohesive. 
you know, we had Jarvan staying in the mid lane there. It was a two men at Dragon, two up top and one in mid. They just got caught out, and you can't make positional mistakes like that against the team with Vi, because he will immediately ultimate you and yeah. kill you. Yeah, not to mention the Randuin's Omen now done for Airwalks as well. So even more crowd control available. Can get the on-demand slow to help out a bit more, of course. The Shivana going to be doing the same thing right now. There we go. Double Randuin's Omen already done. You talked about this C9 EU team being all physical. There's a lot of armor coming in. There's a lot of armor coming in. That's you know probably one of the reasons Shivana didn't go with the early Blade of the Ruined King. She wanted to stack that up. But I have to say, Heavy Bot Lane have gotten two really big wins in a row for themselves. Even though they are still behind, they're on a really good path to a comeback here. Momentum definitely in their favor right now. Cloud9 EU. Haven't found anything new to do in a while. I think that's fair to say. They've gotten the Dragons, that's been nice, but their their attempts to end the game with Baron haven't gone anywhere. They've kind of stopped pushing for now. They've got that outer ring of six turrets, and then Cloud9 EU's kind of run out of things to do. It, do it does look like they're lacking a little bit of discipline here. Um, that The last rotation there being so sloppy with splitting everyone up, um, de uh, definitely a little bit less communication than they need to finish this one out. Maybe they got you know, a little bit too happy with the extra gold that they had, the extra gold lead they had over heavy bot lane. But they are opening up the doors here for a really nice comeback. And it's enabled heavy bot lane to get some wards down around Baron, plus gives them the opportunity to kill some of the pinks. Two of pinks down again here. Yeah, there we go. Two removed. Heavy bot lane getting rid of actually all of the ward coverage that existed in this top side jungle. You have zero vision whatsoever for the blue team outside of minions and champion bodies here. So good stuff there by heavy bot lane to take that area of the map back. And you see him going back and forth. Voidal runs up, use sweeping lens, kills off some, some wards, puts his own down, and they keep going back and forth. Now, I do have a, a theory on the new trinkets. Um, and I think that the really underused one, the orb, is actually a very good tool for teams that are really far behind. Because if you just even pick up one, when you're really far behind and you've lost all vision control of your jungle and of the Baron area, it enables you to actually at least check Baron without having to put your life at risk. You don't always want to have your support walking over there to drop a ward over the wall because a lot of teams can just jump that wall and kill you. So just getting one of those orbs is actually a really good strategy, I think, for teams that are behind and trying to come back. It's just that everybody's kind of written off those orbs as just trash tier trinkets and haven't really decided to try that. I agree, they should give them a better chance at this one, but let's we'll see what they do with this one. Cloud9 EU back to the splits and actually they're making it a 1-3-1 one, one split. So they've got the Mundu in the bottom lane. He's got the teleport. Easy to bring him across the map. But Ku on Jarvan, actually, sitting there in the top lane as well. And the rest of the team kind of lurking around in the mid lane here. So um, trying to get all the lanes pushed up now with C9EU. We'll see if they can do anything with that. Try to find their way into this map. Oh, no. Whips the calling. Everybody's sad. Aw. Oh well. They did clear out the extra ward there in the river though around Baron. So one sweeper successful. They have one left off cooldown, but there's a ward again inside Baron Pit. So again, the, the bait is so hard nowadays with vision being such a restricted resource for your team. You really have to practice this and be coordinated. Yeah, these guys haven't been able to completely rest control despite the fact that they have that same 6,000 gold lead they've had for like the entire mid game here. These guys just aren't finding their ways to completely blind everyone, make things happen. It's it's Cloud9 kind of no longer having any wind in their sails. They're not going anywhere really. They're trying again there in face of a ward. Cloud9 EU trying to knock this Baron down. He but did miss the sweep too. It was just outside of the circle. They're burning it down so fast though that they can't stop now. You have to go for it. Even though there's a Gragas on the other time, this is a 50-50. All right, the damage coming across. Who can pick it up? Got a red team getting Baron Nash with his heavy bot lane, and they pick up a kill for it as well. Goodbye to Ku, who did try to smite, but didn't quite land it in time there. Omne. Porsche a little bit low, is going to be chased down, has a lantern and does manage to click it. The box from Void are going to let him run away, but heavy bot lane in a big way get back in this game. That could have all been avoided by upgrading the sweeper up to the Oracle's lens because then you don't have to deal with just a small little radius there and he could have just gotten that extra inch to the back of the Baron Pit to see that ward. But really, really well played once again by heavy bot lane. I have to keep giving them credit because they're making the right moves on the path to a comeback here. This is the third one in a row where they've had the victory that they needed to. Even though it started out terribly for them, they're making all the right comeback moves.
And now the question is, does Dragon switch hands finally? We're a minute 12 away, and Heavy Bot Lane, though they're down, I think, 0-4 at this point in Dragon, it's, it's Cloud9E who's taking them all, but despite a 3,000 gold deficit, I feel like Bot Lane is the, the stronger team in the map because of Baron buff. Baron buff definitely is going to put them ahead here. Um, they've got amazing regen as well if they want to go siege up. We touched on the extra range that this bottom lane has. That's great for coming in to uh, a tower siege because they have a mid lane Gragas who can knock away the Cloud9 EU team from the turret and allow not only the Kaelin and the Zyra but the rest of the team to grab some early tits on, uh, hits on that turret. And, uh, and get some very good turret damage down. Meanwhile, they can rely on the regen from that Baron buff to sustain, even though they'd have no heals on the team. Well, and here we go. Looks like the team is getting ready to siege, but Cloud9EU will not give up the pushes on the sides. Arwame forced to run away, outnumbered in the mid. He will run away successfully, but you saw Ku on Jarvan pushing the bottom lane, creating pressure there. He might pull a rotation later on, but we'll see. Heavy bot lane still uh, about two minutes left on their Baron buff, looking for some tasty minions and a tasty turret in this mid lane. Meanwhile, Cloud9 uh, EU have also built two Last Whispers um, on a couple of their attack damage heavy damage threads here. So they only need one more before you know the, the early armor stacking becomes that much less effective here from heavy bot lane. So it's really coming down to a late game uh, team fight oriented game here. Whoever makes the first positional mistake for the, the next team fight that does come up is going to be the one that really pays the price because the next objective that goes down is going to be an inhibitor turret. And yeah. the first team to have that breached is going to be at the huge disadvantage. So let's see what these teams can do about this right now. Heavy bot lane still on Baron buff. They did get the uncontested dragon as the rewards for their uh, really, really good team fight just a few minutes ago. And now these guys look for this mid lane. The side lanes, pretty standard. They're kind of holding still around the river, not pushing too quickly just yet. And it's the mid lane just getting kind of wave clear, despite the fact that uh, C9 EU, mostly melee, they're getting rid of minions pretty cleanly. They are. They do have pretty good wave clear, even though they are pretty melee heavy. It's because Lucian got so fed so early. He does an insane amount of damage, um, and a lot of the line damage can be used to clear out wave after wave after wave. The only thing they have to worry about it is, is his mana pool, which is fairly low, being that he's an AD carry. Um, and they do have to worry about that for team fights after wave clearing, after multiple wave clears, because not having mana on the Lucian in the team fight would be disastrous for them. Okay. So the caster-based uh, AD carry. Definitely don't want to oom um on him. He is changing up his build a little bit, though, going towards an Infinity Edge next. So the auto attack damage is going to be growing there pretty rapidly. And to be fair, his uh, itemization is still very far ahead uh, of the AD carry of Heavy Bot Lane there. We talked about how well the Caitlyn did in the pregame in their prior match. We've still got a better AD carry, or at least a more fed AD carry here on Cloud9 EU. So in terms of like late game fight damage, you still got that there on that side at least. He does have more things to worry about though. The Lucian is going to have to worry about the Gragas ultimate splitting him from the rest of his team and then Vi locking onto him. If That's exactly what this heavy bot lane wants. If they can split up the team, then Vi is going to get that lock on straight to Lucian. If they take out that damage target, that is a tremendous amount of Cloud9 EU's damage for the team fight. If they can actually kill Lucian at the beginning, then it will be huge. And that's exactly what they're gonna be they're gonna be looking to do because he has not built a defensive item. Yeah, he hasn't, but at the very least Voidal has. You said earlier he loves face the mountain, upgrading the Targon shield, and it's here already here for Voidal, who's also going towards Aegis to presumably lock it. So that's two, actually three shields, because it's Thresh, that he can give uh here and then later on in this game. So uh, though the AD carry is not putting in a defense, Voidal's doing it for him. Right. That's why it's so important, the Gragas ultimate. Mm -hmm. When that comes in, if he split Voidal far enough away, then they can try and burst down <laughs> that Lucian uh, in that split second. That, that'd be just so unfortunate. You're just like, no! <laughs> You're like away. reaching out and the lantern's like flying away from you. It's like in slow motion. That'd be, that'd be horrible. It'd be like terrifying. You're just dying. I like your Voidal uh, voice impersonation too. That's pretty yeah. much just what it sounds like. <laughs> yeah. Pretty sure. All Estonians have really high pitched voices. Wow, look at the Caitlyn though coming out with the Guardian Angel. Even oh, though she's wow. already this far behind on damage, feeling like gonna have to go with that defensive item. So this means even if the Jarvan Riven 
and Mundo dive all the way onto that Caitlyn to catch her. Never mind, here's the initiate. A little bit of damage coming across, but a good lantern by Voidal is going to keep his teammates safe right there. Mundo popping his ulti pretty early on as well. It does force just some pretty low cooldowns out of Cloud9 EU. Otherwise, they're all right. Uh, no ulties burned at all, actually, by heavy bot lane. So, uh, just kind of a false start right there. Not a lot going on. Uh, but, you know, Baron's coming back up in a minute, and if I'm Cloud9 EU, I'm like, no, it still hasn't worked out for us yet. Maybe we shouldn't. It hasn't worked out for them, but they don't have a strong sieging team. That's why this game has slowed down so much. Um, why we've been waiting around, you know, for the past almost six, seven minutes here. Because Cloud9 EU, they don't really have a great siege team, and they're really looking for a team fight, team fight around an objective uh, where they can pull heavy bot lane away from those turrets and then make use of all that mobility that they have because they still have an amazingly mobile team. And since Riven has picked up the Black Cleaver on top of um, her Hydra, she can armor shred in an area, uh, multiply the damage of pretty much everybody else on her team. That's true. That is going to be all kinds of scary. I just want to point out that uh, this is twice in a row. Um, that Vi has ac that someone has accidentally taken the red buff away from Caitlyn. The first time Shivana Burnout ticked it, this time it was actually the Sunfire cape of Vi stole it away. So we actually haven't had a red buff Kate all game, unless she got one off a corpse. Now, okay, that that was you probably because it's uh, she, she was walking away and it, the the AOE burn took it, but it's not a terrible thing. It's mm -hmm. actually really strong to have late game tanks yeah. with red buffs because they'll be getting off just as many, if not more, auto attacks than the AD carry. AD carries at this point in the game spend so much of their time running and trying to and trying to kite that actually having a red buff on the Vi, who's going to be looking to kill Lucian just as fast as possible, or on the Shivana, who's doing the same thing, is just pretty much just as good. Yeah, not to mention, actual melee red buff slow is a higher slow than a, than a ranged champion with one. So I really feel you on that one. I guess you're right. Yeah, they could pick someone down and pin them out. It's definitely not the end of the world here. Uh, the funny thing is, actually, you kind of talk about where buffs are going. Uh, C9 have given Fabivin the blue buff every single time just for the 10 CDR on Riven. That's the only thing it gives him, and he's fine with it. But there's the initiation. Goes in on Illusion. Does have a lantern. Picks that up nicely. But there comes Q into the front lines. Can he survive long enough? Cullen comes across. Kevachar tanks all of it right now. And already one's going to go down. Zonia's ends, and it's goodbye to Gragas. Fight's still going on. Kevachar goes down as well. C9EU just evaporating heavy bot lane right now. Four dead right now. Double kill. And the Garden Angel is not going to be enough. Goodbye, Ace for Cloud 9 EU. Heavy bot lane just oh. rushing that initiate a little bit. They saw Lucian and wanted to grab him. You could tell right after the Vi flashed in to get her ulti off and hold him in place. Gragas also flashed forward to try and get his barrel off and knock uh, the Lucian into the team, but he was just too late. A little bit too slow, a little bit too far behind. Knocked him away, and they paid for it with an ace. They paid for it with their game as well. Cloud9 EU taking the Nexus turrets down, and the Nexus itself going to fall as well. <laughs> Welcome C9 EU to the Challenger Series. Welcome to the top eight. We'll be seeing more of you guys next week. Really great opening from them. I love the lane phase. Um, I love the